Lancaster Canal now for nearly two weeks, just under two weeks, and we spent most of it in Lancaster, not by design, but <laughs> it's just the way it turned out, which is a bit disappointing, although it is lovely here, so it's not that bad. Yeah, no. The laptop going down definitely interrupted the journey. And we could have left yesterday, but it rained solidly and heavily all day. Yeah, and we are moored right beside an overflow. So there was this like gurgling and splooshing noise for a very large portion of the day. It was quite distracting, mm. though it wasn't as distracting as the boiler exploding when we oh, arrived. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, but it's all good. We've got the, la the Lancaster. We've got the laptop fixed. Started editing vlogs again. So instead of being four weeks behind, I'm now five weeks behind. Good times. Mm. So on the good side, we've started making videos again. They've started going up. So we need to record yet more footage. And today we're going to go to the Glasson branch and up, down, down, it must be down. I think it must There's be an down. ocean down there. Yeah. Um, down the Glasson branch to Glasson Basin, which um, um, is, is actually right beside the sea. It's a sea lock down there. Although we won't be going onto the sea, Michael. No, I know. <laughs> I'm not allowed to go out onto the ocean yet. So, um, six locks? Six locks, and they're the only locks on the Lancaster Canal. Yeah, So six locks. Uh, six miles or something like that? I don't know. Okay. It's it's a few miles down, it's a few miles over. It's supposed to be about a four hour trip. Um, that's not including lock travel time, so... Yes, it is. Is it? Yeah. Is that including lock travel time? Wow, they're smart. <laughs> so that's including some estimate for lock travel time. Um, so hopefully, yeah, four or four and a half hours, not a long day. Hopefully the rain holds off. Yeah, it's and supposed we can to, enjoy for the, the most part, hold off. There might be a little bit of drizzling, but the good thing is... Um, we'll have a night in a basin. Yeah, hopefully. I'm looking forward to that. I've yeah. been wanting to see this bit for a while. I'm just excited about seeing the sea, because obviously we saw the sea when we went to Morecambe Bay, but it was so far out, we didn't actually see the sea. Yeah. <laughs> so if we can see the sea. It's way out there. And rumour has it, um, according to the foxes, that you can see Blackpool Tower from the basin, but... On like a really clear day. I guess it's on a clear day, yeah. so probably won't be able to. I unfortunately haven't had a chance to visit Blackpool and the famous illuminations, so I'm going to have to rely on the description given to us by a couple of viewers who grew up there of it being kind of like Las Vegas, but worse. <laughs> oh, Vegas. Anyway. anyway. We seem to have got sidetracked. Let's, uh, let's go. Yeah. We are leaving Lancaster for the second and last time. We really liked these moorings, even if the building work opposite was a little noisy. We've just left the moorings and we passed this field. It's a field of joy. It's home to horses, cows, sheep, goats and rabbits. Oh, and some ducks and moorhens too. If you don't want to moor right in the centre of Lancaster, there are some quieter moorings here. Who fancies a modest boathouse like this at the bottom of their garden? I do love a roof dog. I'm not sure George is convinced though. He's always just dying up the towpath. That's the fourth boat we've met and we've only been going for about 20 minutes. I wonder why it's so busy this morning. This shady corridor is known as Deep Cutting, and this is Deep Cutting Bridge. Mm -hmm. 
such a well-behaved springer spaniel, not going for a swim until he's told he can. And then, as soon as we've passed, it's straight into the water. On the Lancaster Canal, the aqueducts as well as the bridges have number. This is Aqueduct 91A. We leave the cutting just after Brampbeck Bridge and then the surroundings open right up with views across the countryside. This is Galgate, which means that the junction with the Glasson branch is coming up, so George and I jump off the boat ready to do the locks. This is actually a great place to stop for a few days. There's a boatyard and plenty of visitor moorings, as well as a shop and pubs in the village. One reason I walked ahead is because the first lock on the Glasson branch is immediately after the junction, so I was able to get it ready before Michael did the turn. The lock paddles on the Glasson branch are slightly different to ones we've seen before. They have a crank handle that pulls the paddles open sideways. We didn't find them the easiest to operate. There's only one paddle working on these gates, so the lock drops really slowly. There's a boat waiting to come up and its crew will open the gates for Michael, so George and I walk ahead to get the gates ready on the next lock. Just because Michael's driving the boat doesn't mean I have to do all the heavy lock work. He'll often jump off the boat to help me with the gates and paddles. And then, to give Michael a little break from standing on the back of the boat, I take over the driving for a couple of locks while he walks with George on the towpath. This is a gorgeous section of canal. It's a pity it's so overcast today, so we're really not seeing it at its best. Keep going. It's been trying to rain for a while now, and it's cold and it's damp. Poor George has gotten a little wet. He still manages to look ridiculously cute, even when his face is covered in snot. There's a hotel and restaurant next to Lock 6 and its dining room overlooks the lock. This means we have quite an audience as we go through.
There's a menu for us to read on the wall outside, which makes us even more envious of the people eating inside in the warm. From the bottom lock, there's about another half a mile until you get to the basin itself. Michael takes the boat ahead while George and I follow on foot. We've made it to Glass and Dock. We have. And the weather went really nice just at the end. I'm standing here in shoes full of water, but... Well, I didn't mind that much. Mm, they got enough. Mm. My feet are noticeably damp, but... Those locks were interesting. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they were a bit different. Oh, at least hot. the first ones. They had um, a different kind of paddle where and on the bottom part of the gate you would pull a ratchet that would, you know, well, you'd crank a ratchet that would pull this long sliding bar and just sort of move this big paddle out of the way horizontally instead of lifting it vertically, which is what we're used to. But the crank arm was like really... Yeah, it was weird because the gear would just keep slipping. Everything was kind of too loose. And so you'd, you know, you'd go to crank and then you'd slip and it was not the easiest. So we got to the... um. The basin or the dock. Well, I think that's the dock, I guess. And this is the basin. Yeah, I'm not really sure. Anyway, we're in the basin. We're the in end, the basin. At the end of the arm. And it's huge. Yeah. And there's some pontoons with like seafaring vessels over there. And there's not really many narrow boats around. And we couldn't easily see where the visitor moorings were. So Michael disappeared off. I thought you were actually heading to the lock at one stage. I was like, <laughs> he's going out to see. I'm, t- I'm finally, I'm going to Ireland. <laughs> and then, um, I called the Canal and River Trust actually because well, we, we'd been told there were just permanent holder moorings and that's all we could find. And she uh, they put me through to the local team and she said she'd find me back in five minutes, which she did, but I didn't get to answer it. And she left a message saying that the moorings were in Galgate, which is four miles away. Yeah, <laughs> so that wasn't helpful. helpful. And there are some visitor moorings over there and they're quite nice, but we're on the permanent holder moorings. Well, and they're just not well marked because there's, there's a board that's a Canal and River Trust board but the actual part that says visitor moorings has been painted over, like it's been mm. whitewashed over. So you can sort of read it at a distance. Once you get close, it's obvious. And there's no other obvious route around there because you kind of have to go no. into town a little bit and then out. And then through a courtyard. And, you can't just walk around the outside and of the I, water. Joe was talking about, she was on the phone telling me, oh, I'll just walk over. And I'm like, I cannot see <laughs> an actual pathway by which you get here. So there's a whole strip of um, permit moorings, like back this way. I don't know if you can see that. And there's nobody here, so we don't think we're doing any harm here. That yeah. we're here. Not for one day. Yeah. And we walked around the town a bit. It's an interesting I mean, town, place. It's like sort of a village. It's very small. It's very nice. There's a little hut, snack bar, and we had a veggie burger. Or well, Michael had a veggie burger, and we had cheesy chips. Mm-hmm. That was a nice treat when we arrived. And there's another. There's a little bistro, and there's another little shop. Yeah. And then we walked up a hill and found ourselves a little viewpoint. You can pretty much see 360 degrees around. Yeah, and that kind of, you can can sort of see 360 degrees. Yes, I see what you mean. Okay. What do you mean? (laughs) I'm like, anywhere I go, I can see 360 degrees. (laughs) The view. All I could do is spin. The view is, you're on the highest point, basically. Yeah, and you've got this nice view over sort of Morecambe Bay and the River Loon. Aqueduct, not um, aqueduct. Aqueduct. Estuary. Estuary. (laughs) And, um, 
Yeah, you can you can see over that way towards what I now know as Blackpool Tower, and there's this enormous building over to the right. You can see North Wales. Yeah, you can see part of North Wales, and there's this enormous building over to the right, which it turns out is a nuclear power plant, uh, which explains its size. Um, it sort of more dominates the the view than anything else. Yes. Because <laughs> when she was like, "Oh, you can see Blackpool Tower," and I'm, I'm like, "What? See, it's it's." You can it's, see Lancaster Castle. Yeah. Also, a tiny little thing, and then there's. <laughs> This, you know, large Rubik's Cubey slash Lego block thing just sitting there. And that is actually two um, nuclear power stations, like a grand total of four reactors sitting there pumping out electricity. George got a little muddy. He might need a bath. Joe's gonna bath George. Joe's gonna bath George. Tomorrow, we're pretty much gonna have to turn around and go back mm. up the locks. Yeah, I'm not and looking. Then... Not, I didn't enjoy those locks. Like, mm. I don't they were interesting, but they weren't exactly fun. Mind you, if the weather's better. because well, The weather's going to be worse. Oh, excellent. They're heavy, and also wide locks. Well, I've been spurt on narrow locks because wild lock, wild locks, wide locks. Wild locks. <laughs> wide locks just seem a bit more dangerous to me. I don't know why. Well, not as dangerous as the wild ones. <laughs> like, unless you're with another boat. see David Attenborough. Yeah, over there. I can't do a David Attenborough. No, you really can't. Um, <laughs> if you're with another boat, they're not so bad, but... I don't know. They take a longer time, and a couple of the paddles on these, like there were three locks where they each had a paddle out of commission. So, so they drained oh, quite really slowly. Slow. And um, they were all in our favour, which was pleasant. Pleasant. I'm hoping that when we go up tomorrow, they don't. None of the upstream paddles seem to have been out of commission, so hopefully we can raise yeah. them a little bit quicker. Because it was. See considerably long time to yeah. drop on a few of them so thanks for watching give us a thumbs up if you want to comment down below also hit the subscribe button if you haven't already and click the bell if you want to get notifications Fantasy Island. We're not in Fantasy Island, we're in Lancaster. Welcome to Lancaster. It's the noise of various things moving in workmen and stuff, so we can't talk for long. Well, I mean, I can. Um, <laughs> the one went up last night and is scheduled to go up this morning. Yeah. So, yay. <laughs> and, um, no, five o'clock. I'll, I'll vlogs go at five. Don't you know any, five. anything about our channel? Oh, uh, well. <laughs> and that is actually two. Um, nuclear power stations, like a grand total of four reactors sitting there pumping out electricity, which is good, but boy, does it have some strange reviews on Google. <laughs> there's, there's like, I got bit by a spider and became radioactive. Very strange. People complaining about the gift shop because it doesn't sell plutonium, things like that. I sometimes question the health of people on Google. Anyway. I question the health of people who read the people on Google. That's a good point. <laughs> hug in a cup just sounds like a hug in a cup. Who can complain about that? You've got a hug in your boat. Yeah, but it's not in a cup, is it? <laughs> Alright, so let's stop waffling about waffle. Did I miss something? Oh, this wasn't recording. You're, you're joshing me again. Again. It's a field of joy. It's home to horses, cows, sheep, goats, sheep. I do love a boat roof dog. A boat roof dog? I do love a boat roof dog. Lock on the glass alarm is immediately... Is it arm or branch? <laughs>